Welcome to our 2022 Surveyor 203 RKLE. We're going to start in the back of the unit here, right in your back bumper. You just reach in, pull that cap out. Inside of the bumper, you've got your sewer hose. So once that sewer hose is fully extended, it is about 20 feet long. Just take note of those two ears in the adapter here. That's all I'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. And we just store it in the bumper there. Just help keep any sort of stench out of the trailer. Keep things that little bit cleaner. In this corner, as well as each corner of the trailer, you're going to find these stabilizer jacks here. So what they'll do is they'll just run down, contact the ground, give them another turn or so just to firm them up in the room. All that bounce and sway that you get in the unit right there, you just kind of firm things up while you're out camping. Straight up from there, you've got your power cord. So you're just going to pull that out. It's got this little square, you pop that open. You get that little notch in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with this notch in your cord. You're just going to kind of press it in, give it a little eighth turn, locks it into place. And then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down. As we follow that cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end here. Most campsites are going to have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. Just check those two lights there. As long as it's green, you got good power. Red just means you got an issue there. You're going to want the campsite to check that out. Up in here, you've also got the front jams there. So you can see you got a cold in the back and a hot in the front here. So you're just going to open up that valve. It just allows the water system to drain itself out. The purpose of that would be if you're leaving the trailer for a while, you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can get it all out. Or for winterizing, you can just drain it all out before you go pumping your antifreeze through. Up top here, we've got a bit of a water system. So on the right side here, you've got your black tank flush. So you just, you may notice over time, you've gone, you've dumped your black tank, you know for a fact it is empty, but your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically that's some debris inside of your tank, just hanging between the two probes, causing that misread. So what you can do is just take your water hose, plug it into here, Open up, open up your black valve, which I'll show you in a second. Turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank, getting rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. In the center here is your city water connection. So you're just gonna take that same water hose, plug it into here, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the units. And on the left side here, you've got a cable and satellite inlets, just a coax cable plug into there, fire up at your TV location. Down from there, we've got the sewer system. So you got this cap here, just kind of press it in, give it a turn, then you can pop it off. And you can see it's got the exact same ears that your sewer hose had, so it'll be attached in the same way. You're gonna press it in, give it a turn until it clicks, and that's that. On the left, you get a black valve. On the right, you get a gray. So black valve's controlling your black tank, gray tank, gray valve's controlling your gray tank. Black valve, or sorry, your black tank is filled from your toilet, so that's gonna be your dirtiest water. So when you're dumping your tanks, you wanna do that first. Once that's done, you can come to the gray. We'll dump that last and the gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So typically cleaner water just helps keep that hose a little bit cleaner as you're draining it all out. As we make our way towards the front here, we got this little cap, you pop that open. That is your fresh water connection. So you just be taking your water hose, plug it into there, turn it on. That'll fill up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent right there or by watching the monitor panel inside. The drain for that tank is just right there. So you can see that's opened up and emptied. Just ahead of that, we got your hot water tank here. So you get that keyway, line that up, and you can pop it on open. All of your controls for turning this guy on are just inside the unit. Before you ever turn it on, though, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. And if this tank was full, you'd get a little bit of water coming out of there, just letting you know you are, in fact, full. We do have the unit winterized right now, so this is currently empty. Like I say, if it were full, you'd get that water out of there. You'd be safe to fire it up. If you don't have any water coming out of there, you just want to make sure that everything's turned on. You've got your water system all pressurized to make sure that guy's full before turning it on, just so you don't go running the risk of burning anything out. Your storage compartments here. So you do have four screws there. You can pop this panel out of there and you can access the valves for your water tank. You can see the storage compartment does see straight through to the other side as well. And it is also accessible from underneath your bed. Around front of the unit, you got your little black red box here. So you just got that little switch basically. You're just going to turn it up and that's it turned on. Over the left is it turned off. Battery itself is housed into this box right here. So as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or your seven pin into your tow vehicle, or if you've got the unit out in the sun, because it does have a solar panel, that battery will be charging for you. So underneath this cover here, if you just push those knobs back, you get access to your two propane valves for the video on the floor. Then in the back there, you can see that's currently green, just letting you know we've got propane there and present. Arrows pointing to this tank, so we're running off of this tank. If it were to go red, well, you've got a tank open, it's just letting you know that tank's now empty. So at that point, you'd be closing off the tank, flipping the change over to the other tank, and running off of this one while you get the other one filled. Around front of the unit, we've got the power tongue jack here. So up top, we've got a light switch, and down in the bottom, up is up, down is down. You can see you also get the little leash tie down down there. The other end of your storage compartment just holds open with the magnets. Up on the wall here, you do have this little light. 
So I don't know if you can quite see it, but down in the bottom, you actually have the switch there it has a two over on the left and it's a one over on the right. So do two would be a dual function. So you turn that on, it turns on and it runs a motion sensor. So it'll turn itself off after a minute, but if we walked by it, it would automatically turn on sensing that motion. Or you can have it come over to one and that's it gonna be just turned on. Down below that, you can see you got that little jack there. That's for running all of your stabilizers. You also get the jacks back here for it as well. So this little guy here is gonna be the manual override for your tongue jack up front. Then you get kind of this longer one in the back here. That's gonna be manual override for your slide outs. I'll show you that in a minute here. You can see we do have the TV box in there as well. So if you're looking to pull that out for winter storage, you got somewhere to keep it. And then your outside kitchen stuff here. Just pull that out and set it down on our bench beside the back of the unit for now. And then just lastly in here, just got your water hose as well as a park adapter. So your 30 amp cord into there, 15 amp into standard household outlet. So if you're looking to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. So we'll set up that rear kitchen real quick here. So you have this compartment, you're just gonna unlock it, open it up, you get the same magnet at the top there, holds it open. Pull this drawer out, slide it over to the left, and then open up this little lid here. So our little sink is going to come and fall into this hole here. You can see we got the hose here as well. So you got two little ears there. Just pop open this port there. You can see it's two little spots that'll line up to with those ears. Kind of press it in. Little eights turn locks it in. And then this is cold water only. You do have all the different little settings there. It automatically pressurized, just tying in with your water system. Once you're done, pull it open and then just kind of stretch it out, open up that valve just to get any sort of water that's in there. Just make sure it drains itself out. Okay. So the main hose, we'll grab that in a second. Our stove. You can see you've got four little holes there that you're going to be lining it up with the one smallest hole back here so that's what we're locking it down to so we've got the little rubber foot in the bottom of these guys here i'm going to pull that one out of there and then drop it into place and then get that bottom hole lined up and just lock it down with that foot For your propane hose you can see you got a dust cap for it then you got that quick connect so with this valve here opened up or closed off technically you can pull that collar back as much as you want with that valve opened up you cannot so it's kind of an added safety so underneath the unit we're going to find the same sort of valve and pull that dust cap out of there make sure that valve's closed push the collar back slide our hose into there make sure it's locked in and then we can open up that valve here. And we're just gonna run our hose up to the top. Same thing up here. Lock it in, open it up. And then we can take our knob up front here, just press it in, turn it over and pass the light. And once it clears all the air out of the propane lines, You'll see that little flame going underneath there. There we go. Right. Once we're done, just turn it back to up to off, and that's it turned off. So, taking it down is just the exact opposite. You're just going to be closing off your flow of propane, pulling the lines out of there, taking out the bottom as well. For this hose, I just like to to attach it to itself just ensures that absolutely nothing's getting in there. And we'll just store that in our sink. Make sure that dust cap goes back in the bottom. Then we're gonna undo that foot. Up and out, put that foot back in there. Simple as that. Yeah. Now, 
Now additionally back here, you can also see you've got your little mini fridge up here. So that is a 120 volt only. You do need to be plugged in for that guy to work. Temp control right in the back corner there. Entry door, we'll get through that once we get inside. On top here, we've got your two exterior speakers. We've also got your porch LED right in the middle there. This right here is just the vent for your stove. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you just wanna make sure that this flap here is opened up, allowing those fumes out whenever you're running it. Additionally, with your fan on inside to help assist that. Whenever you're done with it and ready to go traveling, you're just gonna kinda of take that flap, push it in, you'll hear it click and lock into place. GFI protected outlet out here as well, as well as a cable and satellite outlet. So if you're looking to watch TV outside, you got the power to do so. This here is just the exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure this isn't blocked off. It does get hot. And then through the very back of the unit, you've got a ladder there so you can get up top and check your seals. You get the little storage rack here as well. And this customer is also often to go with a rear observation camera. So we've got that hooked up and installed as well. We'll make our way inside now. Assist handle just up 90 degrees, falls into place. The door just opens on up. It is on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. Now, one thing I will point out real quick. Actually, no, never mind. It clears your awning arm. Not to worry about. So that blue handle there, you're just going to pull it over to the side, and you can slide your stairs on out. That little tab right there, if you just push that in, you can change the length of your legs to whatever your needs are at your campsite. It's down all the way. It is a solid step, and there you go. We'll make our way inside. First things first, right on the left, you've got your fire extinguisher, just a standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Straight up from there on the right side here, you've got your light switch, turn that on, does all of your interior lights as well as a little orange accent light above the slide out that we'll see in a second here. Center right, you've got your porch lights that does that orange LED out there. In the very center here, you've got your awning LED, does that whole strip. Then for your slide out, press and hold out and that slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, we'll just hear some whines from the motors letting you know they've reached their stall. And they will also kind of automatically square themselves. Might be wrong actually. No, well there's some clicks from the motors for this thing. Yeah, so that was my bad there. Not the stylus awning that I, sorry, slide out that I thought it was. It's just the standard old conventional style. Once you hear those clicks, you're fully extended, you've reached your stall, you're good to go. On the very left, you've got your awning. So press and hold extend, and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, we're gonna see a little black flap at the end, as well as the black and the metal tube. Once we see that, we're gonna stop. If we were to continue extending, it will actually wind itself up backwards, in which case our fabric will be underneath our tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So we'll see that flap right away here. Once we see that, we wanna stop. Oh, that looks sticky today. There it is. So once you see that, and then the metal tube, you stop right there. Now if it were to start raining, it's gonna be holding some water anyway. So what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, and just pull down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just wanna make sure that both arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so that we're not running the risk of bending anything. Now we're gonna press and hold the track. That awning will make its way back in. Again, just making sure our fabric is over top of the tube. And just one more thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. Just once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arm. Straight up above that, you're gonna find a solar controller. So I do have this pretty well all set up already. We do have a wet battery installed in the unit. So you'll see in the bottom corner there, we've got a wet installed. If for some reason you're to change your battery down the road, press and hold that battery type, and then you can cycle through and go and find the type of battery that you have just to make sure that this controller is reading properly. Up top, you've got your amp and voltage. So you just press that, you can cycle through it, see what you're charging at. So because we're inside, we're currently charging at zero. So we're not charging. Hit it again, tell your rate, again, not charging. And after that, go into your voltage and see where we're currently at. Towards the front of the unit, you just kind of got your, I guess, bedding area, closet space on either side. 
all identical on the both sides. Storage across the top, and then you can see we've also got the coach here as well. So night comes and you're ready for bed, we're going to pick up the foot and that fold that coach down. We've got the little travel latch up here, pull that in towards the center of the unit, pop that piece on down, and grab our mattress and pull that down with it. Then you can see you get your bedding area here. But as you lay down up by the heads, on either side you have this little kind of cup holder here. And if you pull that out, you get a little bit of cubby space in there as well. Identical over on the other side as well. The blind over here as well as throughout the unit, they all just sit where you leave them. Simple as that. And once we're done, we're just gonna pick up the foot, push it all the way back, make sure that lines up, locks into place. There you have it. Pick up the couch, kind of bring it up. And if you just give the back that little bit of help coming through, she folds right over, no problem. So right here, you've got your emergency exit. So you're gonna pull that red tab to get rid of the screen, take this handle here, throw it outside and hop on out. Like I said, blinds throughout the unit, set where you leave them. On this side here, you get the USB charging as well as the power outlets. A little bit of drawer space here. Down below that is your LP detector. So propane's heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off just like your smoke detector would. As for your smoke detector, he's right here. And above my head, we have a roof vent. So you just get that knob there and just turn it to open it up. Simple as that. And then in your dinette, you just have the one light up here, just on its own center push button. Get your dinette space. And up on the wall here, we've got your thermostat. So just press that bottom bar, kind of open it up. Hit it again, it'll come into fan speed. So fan low is just moving air with the low fan. There's no cooling involved. And same idea for high, it's just the high fan moving air. After fan, we'll come into cool. So cool high, this is where the fan will stay on high, constant, with cooling coming in and out as needed. Same idea on cool low, so cooling all the, sorry, low all the time, but cooling in and out as needed. Once you come into the cool low auto, this is where it'll become an on-demand system where the air conditioner will cycle in and out as needed on demand. Same idea with high, so the difference between low and high just being it won't use the high fan or it won't lose the low fan. With your air conditioner going, you basically got two different options. You can have these two end louvers here closed, in which case we're kind of just forcing all the air through itself right there or you can open them up and just choose to which side you're shooting towards. Okay. Temp selection is just with your arrows there. And after that bar coming down into heat, it'll turn off the air conditioner and turn on the furnace. The furnace will moving, be moving its air through a bunch of little portals that you can see we've got throughout the units. I'm kind of up on the walls, got another one around the corner there, got another one in your bathroom as well. Now the first couple of times you run that furnace, you might get a little bit of a smell throughout the unit. It's just a new furnace smell. I'm sorry, I can't help you. After heat, we hit that bar again, it'll come down into off, and then it just cycles back around. Straight down from there, we've got a GFI protected outlets. And then into your kitchen here, get some storage space above the TV. So for the TV, it is on a mount and a travel latch. So we'll just undo that and we can swing it out, point it to wherever we like it. And right behind it though, up top here, you've got a power outlet for it, as well as your antenna outlet for it. So for turning that antenna on, you just get that button right there. It turns on that green light, letting you know you're turned on. It will actually help clear up your stereo signal as well. This switch right there, if we turn that on, that's your Wi-Fi for the unit. So I'm not exactly sure how it works. I think you do have to be subscribed to some form of a plan. I'm not sure exactly. I'm sure a service department can help you out on that end. Down below that, we've got your stereo, so the power button turns it on. If you just hit that power button again, that's just mute. Just press and hold turns it off. Volume in the top left there. So your speaker zone one, if you press and hold, that's your inside set of speakers. Speaker zone two is your outside set. And beyond that, fairly well straightforward. Bluetooth connected to your phone. Get all of your controls for running it down there, all your memories and all that. And source, if you cycle through that, so auxiliary is right in the bottom here. AVs through the back of the units. HDMI is just right in the front here. Auxiliary again, straight in the front, AM, FM, and USB as well. Like I said, press and hold the power button, turn it off. We got some storage space up, up top here as well. By the sink, you've also got a little light there, so it's just on its own center push button. So you do get the mobile head here as well. The little shower head feature, hot and cold water, of course. The covers, they are just soft plastic, so nothing hot on them. Down below, we got a little bit more storage down here. 
Again, just be mindful of our drains. Don't want to be breaking those. Drawer space. And then just a bit more storage space here as well with the addition of the bottle opener there as well. Microwave, pretty standard, just like home. Not much I can teach you there. Down below that, we've got your range vent. So we got the light here as well as the fan. So of course, this is the fan that you want turned on whenever you're running your stove, evacuating your fumes. Bifold cover just flips on back. You can take a knob, turn it over to high, hit it with a sparker, and you can see it fires right up. Now, the first time you go to use your propane system, especially if you've been away from the camper for a while, it can take a second just to fire everything up. So it's got to clear all the air out of the propane lines. It's perfectly normal. Goes in her back up. The button over on the right side there, if you turn that on, is your stove light as well as your knob light. For your stove, on the far right here, you're just going to turn that over to that little pilot light and press and hold. Hit it with a sparker and you can see in the back there that pilot light gets going immediately. Then you can release the knob and then you can turn it up to your desired temperature and it fires right up. Now again, can take a minute for it to work. I have just used this a few minutes ago, so that's why it's working so nicely for me. Once we're done, turn it back down to pilot and it'll hold just the pilot light for you. If you're leaving the trailer or going traveling, well, you just want to make sure that guy's right off. Return air for the furnace down below that, so you just don't want to be blocking that off. A little bit more drawer space on the side here. And down below the fridge, we've got your converter. So just press the top and center. She pops on open. You get all of your breakers down the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's going to sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. And then on the right side, we get all of your fuses. If a fuse were to ever pop, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. Above that, we have your fridge. So on the far left here, we've got your power button. Press and hold for a few seconds, then she turns on. There we go. So this button on the left here, so that kind of you can see the top portion is kind of solid it out there. That's going to be your fridge, of course. So press that. You've got your temp selection through your fridge or your freezer, sorry. On the right side, press that and get temp selection through the fridge. And then on the right side there, I believe that's just a nighttime mode. Don't know exactly what it does. I assume it's more efficient. So we got the freezer up top and the fridge down below. And over in this corner here, you get a little bit of storage space, both sides. Up top here, you've also got another little light, and there is also a power outlet up here as well. And then we'll back up into the bathroom. Light switch is just up on the wall there. Toilet here, so flush is just on the right side. Get a whole bunch of storage up the back here. A towel rack there as well. GFR protected outlets, a test on top, reset on the bottom. Sorry, test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, this is the first thing you should check. Your medicine cabinet here, just pops on open, you get this little elastic on the side here, sits into that tongue there, just holds it open for it, or closed I guess. Hot and cold water of course, some storage space below it, again just mindful of our drains. And then right here you've got your heated holding tank system, so you can see they are clearly labeled fresh grey and black, turn that switch on, heats up that tank for you. And then on the left side here you've got your monitor panel. So in the bottom corner you can see you've got your hot water heater controls. So on the left is gas, turn that on, fires it up with gas. If you ever get that little fault light there it's just setting you know it hasn't fired up so at that point just off and back on to reset it. In the center there we've got your water heater with electricity, turn that on, turns it on with electricity. And then on the right side you've got your water pump, turn that on, turns on your water pump drying out of your fresh water tank to pressurize your lines. Monitor system, we got battery in the bottom here, so you can see because we're plugged in right now, we're currently C for charging, G would be good, F is fair, L is low. For your fresh tank, as you fill that up, you go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Then right behind me is your shower. It's a standard head and hose, hot and cold water, of course. And this curtain here just slides on over. You can see it's got that little tongue right there. It bites in, holds. When you're done, push it in, it tracks automatically. And then above our heads is our roof vent. So you get the same roof vent that you had in the front there. So just going to turn that knob to open it up. Just the addition of that switch back there turns on the fan. Yep. All right. And I do believe that's about it for this little guy. If you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.